This is a deer heart. And as you can see, it's about as big as my hand. And in this case, um, my uncle um, got this deer and when he was taking it out of the, the body, it got cut a little bit down here at the bottom. But this is the ventral side of the heart and we can tell that because we have this nice big vein that travels diagonally. This is the left side of the heart here. Remember when you're talking about left and right in anatomy, you're talking about the patient's right and left. This is the right side of the heart over here. So this, this is a big cardiac artery that goes diagonally across. So that's how we can tell that this is the front side of the heart, the ventral side. If we turn it over, this is the dorsal side of the heart. And yes, it also has a big vein, but it kind of cuts more like straight up and down on the heart. So back to the ventral side, um, on the right side, you can see that there's this little flap at the top. This is the right auricle and you cut it open and the interior, the chamber inside of it would be part of the right atrium. And over here we see the other flap. This is the left auricle. And again, you cut that open and it would be going down into the left atrium. So um, one of the blood vessels in the back of the left atrium has been cut so you can see my finger wiggling around inside there a little bit, inside the left atrium. Down here, this would be the right ventricle. All of this area down in here pretty much is ventricle area. If we cut it open, we'll see those chambers inside. But this is the right ventricle, and then this would be the left ventricle. Okay, the top part of the heart is actually referred to as the base, and the base is where you're gonna have major blood vessels emerging. So this is called the pulmonary trunk, and it will branch to become uh, the two pulmonary arteries, one going to each lung. And if you look at this heart, there's actually a chunk of lung tissue still attached. Let me get a hold of it, there you go. So that stuff right there, that jiggly red stuff, that's a bunch of lung tissue. And then also on the base of the heart, you can see this is part of the aorta coming here. And if I pick up the whole heart, you can look straight down where that blood vessel's been cut. And there's some other major blood vessels that we're gonna look at back there. Now the bottom point of the heart is called the apex. So this is the apex and it's just all ventricle down here. I've turned the heart over and we're looking at the back of the heart. And I've got my finger inside the, the opening to the inferior vena cava. So if I put my finger back in there and I push it up, I'm up here in the right atrium. So my finger is wiggling around here in the, the right atrium. And I could push my finger down in there and it'll end up in the right ventricle. So we're here on the ventral side of the heart. And again, over here we see the right atrium. And I, I'm gonna flip the heart over so that we're looking at the dorsal side. And I've put the screen straw through the opening of what was the superior vena cava that went into the right atrium here, and what was the inferior vena cava going into the right atrium. So both of these blood vessels are going to dump blood into the right atrium, and this blood would be deoxygenated. So now we're back to the ventral side, again, looking for that diagonal blood vessel that tells us that this is the ventral side, the side that we towards the belly. Right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. I put the green straw through that cut that was in the heart, and the way it goes through this blood vessel at the top, this blood vessel is at the top that the straw is coming out of, that is part of the aorta the largest artery of the body. And the aorta comes from the left ventricle. So that cut that my uncle made in the heart is coming out, it was made in the left ventricle. So you can see it's a very large chamber. This is the right ventricle over here. We're gonna open the heart up and look at it. I went ahead and opened up the left side of the heart, opened up the left ventricle and the left atrium. And you can see in this um, video, you can see down here, this big lump of muscle. This is called a papillary muscle. And there's another one over here. 
um, and you can see they're kind of nipple shaped, which is what pap means is nipple, papillary, nipple shaped muscle here. And then you can see all these little strings. These strings are called cordy tendony, and they attach the papillary muscles to some white flaps that are up in here. And those flaps are called cusps. And the cusps are very thin and membranous. There you can see one. Now, since this is the left side of the heart, there are two cusps. And so this uh, makes up what we call the bicuspid valve of the heart. It separates the interior of the left ventricle from up here. This is the interior of the left atrium. And so we have two cusps, bicuspid. This, this valve is also referred to as the mitral valve. The other thing I want to point out is the thickness of the muscle over here on the left ventricle. This has to be very powerful muscle because this chamber of the heart has to squeeze and pump hard enough to shoot blood out of the aorta uh, to all the uh, arteries of the body. And this is a shot of the inside of the left atrium if we zoom in a little bit. And there's two holes if you look, they look kind of like a pig snout back in there. And I'll have to take the light off. but. Those two holes are two of the entrance points of the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins are bringing blood back to the heart from the lungs with oxygenated blood. I've cut open the right side of the heart. The left side is over here. This is the right side that we're looking at, opened up over here. And this big chunk in the middle, this wall of muscle, is called the interventricular septum. So if we lay this open, we look up in here, you see those white stringy things. Those white stringy things make up part of the tricuspid valve. And the tricuspid valve separates the right ventricle, this big roomy chamber down here, from the right atrium. So if I stick my thumb through the tricuspid valve, you can see my thumb wiggling up here in the right atrium. Again, those, str those stringy things are called cordy tendony. And the bottom of the stringy things, the bottom of the cordy tendony, are attached to these little muscles called papillary muscles. They're smaller in the right atrium than they are in the left atrium. Um, there are three cusps that the other end of the cordy tendony are attached to. So down here at the bottom, the little strings are attached to the papillary muscles. And at the top, they're attached to these little membranes. So this is very thin. My it's covering my thumbnail right now. That's one of the three cusps that make up this valve, the tricuspid valve. Now there are two other valves in the heart. One is in the pulmonary trunk, which I'm pointing to here. The other one is in the aorta, which is part of the aorta is up here. The pulmonary trunk is going to split into two uh, pulmonary arteries going to each lung. Now, over here on the right side, the pulmonary artery comes from the right ventricle. So I've already cut this all the way open so we can see. And um, the pulmonary trunk, the valve is going to be at the base of the pulmonary trunk. And there are three small flaps, which if you look here, they looks kind of like three little scalloped edges here. One, two, three. Those are the valve flaps. Now there aren't any cordy tendony. These blood, these little flaps open and close purely due to the force of blood moving from the right ventricle into the pulmonary trunk. Now the tricuspid valve again, you, you can see the tricuspid valve, the opening between the right atrium. My thumb has gone up into the right atrium right now and the right ventricle. Uh, the right ventricle only has to pump blood next door to each lung. So if we compare the wall of the ventricle on the right side, it's fairly thin compared to the thickness of the wall over on the left side, the left ventricle. And again, that's because of the dis differences in distances. The right ventricle only has to send blood to the lungs, and they're right on each side of the heart. The left ventricle, on the other hand, has to pump hard enough to get the blood all throughout the body all the way up to the brain, all the way down to the toes, all the way down to the fingertips. We're back on the left side of the heart and we're, this is all left ventricle. So you can see, again, the bicuspid valve here, cordy tendony, papillary muscle here, and the cusps are up in here. 
So this is the aorta. I've cut it open. It used to be, of course, in a tube shape. It was back together like that, but I've cut it down the side and opened it up. And so you can see one of these openings, there's actually three major blood vessels that branch off at the top of the aorta. Um, and so that's one of those major branches there. But we're looking at the aortic valve. The aortic valve separates the left ventricle down here from the aorta. And you can see um, the little flaps. Now in this case, we can only see two of them. There's a third one somewhere. But um, these kind of little scalloped edges here, that little roundish thing and that little roundish thing are two of the um, flaps for the aortic valve. And again, these don't have cordy tendony. They open and close purely due to the force of blood moving from the left ventricle and up into the aorta. Now again, this is the aorta that I've cut open and laid open, and this large hole here you see is one of the major branches of the aorta. But the smaller hole down here is interesting. That smaller hole is going to go out onto the surface of the heart and start branching to feed the actual heart muscle itself. So all the blood that was moving through the heart, none of that is used to actually nourish the interior of the heart. We have to have our own cardiac pathway for cardiac cardiovascular pathway for that. So this small hole opens up to become all these blood vessels that we see on the front and the back of the heart and feed the heart muscle.